I think I hit my first jewel in maybe 2016, uh, maybe the summer of 2016. Um, and it was, uh, I really enjoyed the design of the product and how easy it was to conceal. Julian Mendoza is one of the millions of youth impacted by the vaping epidemic. Mendoza formed a dependence on high-level nicotine devices like Juul at just 15 years old, relying on daily consumption for the last seven years. The Juul e-cigarette was created in 2015 and marketed as a way to decrease dependence on combustible tobacco. The sleek, USB-looking metal stick would change the composition of the e-cigarette industry. From 2011 to 2019, middle and high school rates of e-cigarette use rose drastically. High school rates increased by over 1,700%, while middle school rates rose over 1,600%. As Juul became the hottest product on the e-cigarette market, its rise and fall would encourage a new generation of nicotine addiction. I would say every 10 minutes, there's a, there, depending on what I'm focused on, there's a, a, an immediate need to pat my body until I feel the shape of my vape and then, and then hit the vape. So it, 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 it's honestly a, a, a very ritualistic at this point. Word of mouth advertising and upbeat ad campaigns significantly increased the popularity of the Juul. The fruity flavored pods were accessible to youth from corner stores and gas stations. Even at vape specific shops like G&J Smoke and Vape Shop in Lincoln, manager Dom Dunn says underage patrons find ways to access these products. Of course, we, every shop does their best to make sure that anyone underage does not get anything, but it's the world that we live in, someone's gonna manage. If you tell them no, they'll find a loophole. The increase of youth vaping has spread fear of health concerns for this young demographic. National coalitions and campaigns against youth vaping emerged. In October 2018, the FDA created the Real Cost ad campaign to educate youth about the dangers of e-cigarette use. In January of 2020, the Trump administration issued a ban on the sale of most flavored vape pods, leaving Juul with only tobacco and menthol flavors. But nicotine liquids were exempt, providing loopholes for those already addicted to find new types of e-cigarettes to get their fix. Now we have all these disposables all over. And if it weren't for Juul, honestly, that probably wouldn't have happened. The flavored vape pod ban dramatically decreased Juul's popularity among youth. But disposable vapes, which deliver nicotine through heating an e-liquid saturated cotton instead of pods, took Juul's place as the most popular form of youth vaping devices. We'll have people walk in and ask for Evo bars, Lolly Mods, like a bunch of other brands that I have never heard of. But after searching the internet, you know, there's hundreds of different brands out there now that are just pumping out more and more product. While Juul has paid hundreds of millions of dollars to settle lawsuits for the effects of its products on minors, other companies are not yet regulated to that same effect. Sadie Jensen, a tobacco prevention educator for the Lincoln-Lancaster County Health Department, says the FDA created an application process for the marketing of these disposable vape products. And until they're approved or denied, these large numbers of disposable products are allowed to stay on the shelves. So it take, is taking them a significant amount of time um, to go through all of those products. They had to provide um, scientific data and evidence that they were not marketed to youth, that they were not intended for youth use, um, that they would not significantly increase dangers to public safety and public harm. Jensen works as a part of Tobacco Free Lancaster County, which partnered with the tobacco control nonprofit Truth Initiative last year to create a textable tobacco quit line. This quit line is advertised through Tobacco Free Lancaster County's Mirror Cling campaign, which places large stickers on the mirrors of bathrooms in middle, high schools, and other public venues across the county. It's just a, you can scan a QR code or text GhostBabe to 88709 and it immediately connects them to a text-based 
um, cessation resource. So we really try to push that message as well, that cessation is possible, quitting is possible. Tobacco-free Lancaster County also connects with local cultural institutions to provide multilingual messaging. Jensen says diverse messaging helps to address a wide range of reasons for youth vaping, especially as a coping mechanism for mental illness. There's a significant mental health issue in um, with our kids. And so if we can address some of those issues uh, better and if we can help them to manage and cope with stress and mental illness a little bit better, um, then maybe we can also see a reduction in trying to use these products to manage that. Regardless of youth's reason for vaping, an abundance of vape products are within their reach. And people like Mendoza, who started vaping daily with the introduction of Juul, have moved on to other devices to feed their nicotine addictions. I, I use nicotine to help me satiate other addictions. And to me, it just seems like a much, much lighter toll than the other addictions I had. While Juul may be nearly obsolete, its high-level nicotine devices left an impact on the e-cigarette industry, influencing a new generation toward nicotine addiction. Reporting for Nebraska News Service, I'm Ann Gallagher.